Hello friends, in this video we are going to find out how to calculate the radar cross section of various complex objects. So let's begin with the topic. So in this video we are going to cover a topic that is calculation of radar cross section of complex object and we are going to find out the radar cross section of cone object capped with the spear. After at the end of the topic we will solve some MCQs. So let's start. The, as a rule of thumb it is always considered that whenever we want to find out the radar cross section or RCS of complex object then it is always convenient to divide or to separate out the complex object into a smaller standard object. The RCS of the standard object are already find out. So with the help of after finding out the RCS of the standard object the individual RCS is then sum up to find out the RCS of complex object. So with the help of this method we can find out the RCS of complex object. Now let's consider one example. Now in this example we are going to consider two standard object that is nothing but the cone and spear. And in order to form a complex object we will join the cone with the spear. And for that purpose we will half the cone into two parts and attach the cone in a such a way that the cross section of cone matches with the cross section of spear. Then the complex object become a cone object capped with a spear. Now let's have a look of the figure for calculation of RCS value. So the figure shows the figure shows plot of nose on the RCS section with an angle of 30 degree as a function of 2 pi a upon lambda. Now here in this case the value of a is nothing but radius of sphere and it is normalized with the area of sphere that is nothing but 4 pi a square. Now in this case we can say that here the value of RCS becomes maximum it is if it is viewed from the front end side rather than viewing it from the rear side. This is because of the spherical nature of the sphere. Now when the radar system views the complex object parallel or perpendicular to the surface then the larger value of RCS is obtained. Now here in this case the approximate value of RCS is obtained as 0 0.1 lambda square but this value is also important though it is approximated value because this approximated value gives a important information about the behavioral pattern or behavior of the complex object. So in this way we can find out the RCS of complex object. Basically the RCS is nothing but an ability of the radar system to detect the object. Higher the value of RCS, higher possibility of detection of the object. Now the RCS is defined as the ratio of re-radiated signal from the target to the receiver to the power or the signal incidence on the receiver. It is denoted by a factor or it is denoted by a term that is sigma and it is a characteristics of the scattered object. The RCS is also considered as one of the important parameter in deciding range of the radar system. Because of the random statistical nature of the RCS, it is not possible to determine the exact radar range equation. And therefore, while calculating the RCS of any object, we require to consider the probability term. So when we evaluate the random statistical nature of RCS, then it is possible to find out the exact or approximate value of the radar range. So this is how the cross section or the radar cross section of the complex object is calculated. There are different objects which are considered as a standard object. For example, spear, cone, metal rod. These are the standard object. We can also say the flat plate is also considered as a standard object. So the RCS of these objects are known. So with the help of standard object, we can find out the RCS of complex object. Now let's move to MCQ. So the first question is RCS obtained from the target is always fixed and the options are true and false. The option is false or the answer is false because it is not possible to obtain the same value of RCS every time. Because if the object is viewed from rear side then the RCS value is different from the object view from front end side. If the radar system observe or if the radar system view the object perpendicular to the surface then large value of RCS is obtained. Therefore it is not always necessary to obtain the same value of RCS every time. So the RCS obtained from the target is always fixed is considered as a false statement. Now let's move to the next question. 
the question is rcs obtained from the target depends on and the options are first a is target reflection property second is radar operating frequency and third is radar transmit power and option number four is all of the above now in the topic of rcs we saw that the rcs is considered as a characteristics or property of the system and it is more depend upon the characteristics dimension of the object rather than depending upon the radar wavelength but radar wavelength also plays an important role for RCS because depending upon the value of radar wavelength the scattering takes place in railing region or in optical region. If the radar wavelength is smaller than the dimension of the object then scattering takes place in the railing region whereas if the radar wavelength is larger than the scattering object dimension of the scattering object then the scattering takes place in the optical region. The one more region present between the railing and optical region and that is nothing but the resonance region or my region and in my region the RCS value is very much larger. Therefore, the radar wavelength also plays an important role in determining the value of RCS. Now, if you look at the first two options that is target reflecting properties and second is radar operating frequency. So, both are useful in calculating the value of radar. Now, let's move on to the third option that is nothing but radar transmit power. The radar range equation is given by a formula that is R max is equal to PT GA sigma upon 4 pi square into S minimum raised to 1 by 4. So in this equation the value PT is nothing but the peak transmit power and the value of RCS is included in the equation. So we can say that the peak transmit power or the radar transmit power also plays an important role in determining the value of RCS. So we can say the option number 4 is considered as a right option for the question. That means the RCS obtained from the target depends on target reflection property. Also it depends on radar operating frequency and it also depends upon the radar transmit power. So we can say all of the above is the correct answer for the question. So this is how we can find out the RCS for a complex object. So we summarize the topic now. So to find out the RCS of complex object, it is always important to divide the complex object into a smaller object having a standard RCS. And after finding out the individual RCS, the, all the RCS is get combined together to find out the RCS of complex object. So I hope you understand this topic of finding the RCS of complex objects. So thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira. Subscribe Ikira. Thank you.